Welcome to the Assist Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Schwartz, and we are back with another sports-related episode. The Champions League quarterfinals were just settled on Tuesday and Wednesday. The semifinals are all set to happen in a couple weeks, and joining me today for his debut is Julio Mendez. Julio, how are you? I am great. Very excited to be here to talk about Champions League. Perfect. Tell the people a little bit about yourself, a little bit of an intro. All right. Well, I am from Jacksonville, Florida, about two hours north from Orlando. Uh, I'm of Venezuelan descent. Huge soccer fan, so that's why I love talking about soccer, especially Champions League, because it's super exciting. I'm a biomedical science major here, hence why I'm in, like, all of Zach's classes Mm -hmm. mostly. Yeah. And that's about it. And your IM team has beaten mine for two consecutive years. Yes, I take pride in that. Uh, (laughs) My team has destroyed Zach's team. Actually, this year your team forfeited because you guys were scared to play us. And you won the division, so you knew. Yeah, it's all right. We didn't get to play that week, but I knew you were scared. It's all right. I don't blame you. Oh, man. So first game I wanted to talk about was probably one of the most wild we've seen in a long, long time. Tottenham. Lost to Manchester City 4-3, to but they advanced on away goals. Uh, there were two crucial VAR decisions, one on the Lorente goal that they reviewed for handball. It was ruled a goal. And then right at the end, uh, Sterling had a no goal, and Aguero was probably a half body length offside, which is really something, I mean, only VAR could pick up. And Manchester City are out of the competition again. No semifinal appearances under Pep Guardiola. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel bad for Sterling, to be honest. He had a pretty great game, scored Mm -hmm. two goals. Would have been a hat trick with the last one, but like you said, Aguero was barely off sides. It's kind of crazy how much they had to use VAR this week, though, in all the games. Like, they literally used it, I think, at least once in every game, Mm -hmm. and like they made some huge decisions off it. So, yeah, I feel pretty bad for uh, for Man City, especially after losing in quarters last year to uh, Liverpool, year before that, round of 16 to Monaco. So, they've been having a bad couple years in the Champions League. It just felt like with a lot of other teams, like Real Madrid's out already. We'll talk about Juventus is out already. It almost was like Man City was. This was the year they could strike and really make a name, and they're out again. And it's yeah. just kind of. It's especially funny because like Tottenham's so far behind them in Premier League right exactly. now, and they're basically like, "Screw you, we're gonna take you out the Champions League." And so Harry Kane have... didn't play in this game. Yeah, he got injured. Yeah, I exactly. Mean. And the funny thing is, they're actually playing again on tomorrow. Yeah, Saturday. In Premier League. Right. Yeah, so be interesting. <laughs> Man City will probably beat them four nothing. Oh uh, yeah, just, definitely. Tottenham just... probably doesn't even care about that game. They're <laughs> just, like, "Who cares? We're, we're advancing in Champions just League." Smash them. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I've seen about Pep and how all his time at Man City's been a failure and all this stuff just because they can't get through this Champions League hurdle and I don't know how much I really buy into that I think Pep's a great coach obviously and he's coached you're a Bayern fan right I mean he's coached both of our clubs yeah and I mean it just seems like there's some type of psychological thing that they don't have maybe it's the not the lack of history maybe it's just something about Europe I don't know yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't really know because obviously they were the best team in the Premier League last year. They basically dominated everyone yeah. and won the Premier League, so they obviously did really good in that. But obviously people value Champions League a lot too because it's like mm-hmm. ev- like clubs, the best clubs in all of Europe. So that's like kind of a big deal to be able to get far in the Champions League and the fact that they haven't gotten that far, it's obviously kind of shows why people have talked down on him. But I, I still think he's a good coach. Like, I mean... yeah. Like, this was definitely a hard-fought game, too. It's not like they got blown out or anything. Right. And it literally came down to a half a body length at the end with that. And, I mean, they were just back and forth. Four goals in the first 20-something minutes. Four goals in the first 11 minutes. Oh, is it 11? Five goals in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, this game was crazy from, like, the get-go. Yeah, so, I mean, Tottenham, hats off to uh, Pochettino. For be, being able to get this team without Kane, with the new stadium drama, with no budget, literally bought no players this year, and they're in the Champions League semifinals. That's that's incredible. Yeah, I think Sun, for Sun definitely side. stepped up in this game without Kane. There, he scored two crucial goals. Uh, the one that he finessed into the corner was obviously like really nice. Yeah, uh, he really stepped up when they needed him the most. So he's had like a meteoric rise, like the past yeah. couple of years. Like he was like yeah, a substitute, crazy. and all of a sudden now he's like he might be in the. PFA, like, player of the year running, just how yeah. insane he's been with Tottenham. Asian invasion. <laughs> Go <Yeah>. son. <laughs> South Korean man. I love watching it. Um, so, Man City is through, and, or, I mean, sorry, not Man City, Tottenham is through, and they will play 
Ajax in the semifinals. Ajax, after knocking off Real Madrid improbably in the round of 16, they went and did the double and beat Juventus 2-1, advanced 3-2 on aggregate. Matias De Litt, the He's 18, right? 18, 19? I think he's 19. Youngest captain ever in for Ajax, I believe. So said another way, a man that is our age um, or a little bit younger than that us. That makes me feel really good about myself right now. <laughs> just won the Champions League quarterfinal uh, with a header uh, laid on in the second half to put them through. Ajax, this is their first Champions League semifinal since 1997. Um and just the history of the club. I think I talked about this with one of my friends. Just the history of Ajax. Obviously, Johan Cruyff start there. The European Cups in the 80s and the 70s. And most recently in 97. I mean, it, it feels a bit as almost like a soccer fan. Like, I don't, I don't know anyone that's an Ajax fan. I don't know anyone, know I anyone do. that's I Dutch. actually have okay, uh, someone I work with. Like, one of the supervisors I work with for IM Sports. He's yeah. actually from... Uh, Europe like he was he's from there he's a transfer student he's like a huge Ajax fan and I know that he was like super excited this week and when they beat Real Madrid he's just been like super happy lately yeah I'm really happy for him because obviously I mean no one really expected this I definitely didn't expect this Ajax has like a really young team I think their average age is like 23 years old their captain's 19 years old so like this is kind of really cool for a, a team this young to be able to to beat two really good teams in the Champions League, like Real Madrid and Juventus like this. Yeah, I know for me it's just seeing a team that's this story of a club, you know, uh, being able to do this again, you know, and basically they've become a team that sells to bigger clubs like Suarez to Liverpool, for instance, um, a while ago and just other – and even this year, Frankie de Jong, the stud, yeah. Bar- uh, stud midfielder, is playing for Barcelona next year. So it's just incredible that this team at least has been able to – stay together and do this. And uh, DeLitt, of course, is being uh, courted by Man City, Barcelona. Is that Barcelona. You pronounce it? DeLitt? I think so. It's like a random G in there. I don't really know <laughs> the, if you, like, pronounce that. The Dutch name gives me so much, so much trouble. Yeah, I, I honestly, like, don't even really... Like, if I can avoid saying their name altogether, I'll just be like, that there's, one guy, their captain. <laughs> their <laughs> stud winger, uh, what's his name? Zayach? Heikiam Maybe. Zayach? Something like that. Maybe that's I, yeah, how you pronounce I, it. I mean, he's amazing too. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so Ajax threw, they played Tottenham in the next round. And I mean, Juventus, Juventus kind of like sitting away uh, ever since they um, had their 2015 final run uh, where they lost to Barcelona in the championship. It's... They, they've also been a team that just has always been really good, has been really organized, has knocked out some big clubs like Barcelona in the past couple of years. They can't, they haven't been able to put it together in a in a run, and you'd think they added Ronaldo, who I think Messi's the best player of oh, all time. Oh, for sure. Okay, I'm glad we agree on that. We don't have to spend much time on yeah, that. Yeah, for but sure. Ronaldo, is, you know, he's a, an excellent goal scorer and is just able to seemingly challenged the randomness his first goal was like really nice the way he was mm-hmm. able to create separation from his defender on that header like was yeah. super nice but like he had some choice words after i mean after the game he was kind of like calling out the manager for not using like enough attacking tactics which i mean i kind of understand because he's obviously a very attack-minded player but he was obviously calling out like his teammates too saying they weren't in the right mental state to be able to win that game. He was he's like mm-hmm. kind of calling for a complete overhaul for Juventus in the summer. He wants some new pieces in there, which honestly is not going to make the team and like him saying that isn't really going to make Juventus better right now yeah. because his teammates are probably like, "Well, crap, like you're basically saying that we're trash right now and yeah. <laughs> we're not able to like pull through when when we're needed the most." And you look up and down the roster like Paulo Dybala is a great player. And oh, I yeah, like I love Dybala. I feel like he's under he's been underused one in uh, the Argentina World Cup run last year. I was so angry that they would not use him. And here again, like it seems like he's just not being used in the right way. So it's almost like, well, we just added Ronaldo, who really, if you add Ronaldo, um, you have to fit the team around him. And this was kind of the messy yeah. problem a couple years ago with they brought in Ibrahimovic, didn't work. Uh, it's the kind of the same thing. And it's like, well, you can't just call out everyone based like you're saying like do that and not recognize that well th- this is like a massive thing like you can't just add you and then you know win everything yeah exactly i mean dabala like it seems like he's kind of lost confidence in himself yeah. too as far as like they haven't he honestly should be kind of used more than i think he is like he's a really quality player but i don't think he's maybe like been used 
how he should be, I want to say. Like, mm-hmm. I definitely think he has so much potential there because he's a great player. I've watched him with Argentina, with Juventus. Like, yeah. he, his, like, set pieces, free kicks are, like, incredible. But, yeah, I think he's definitely lost a lot of confidence in himself, which is kind of reflecting in the way he's playing. He's the type of player that on, like, FIFA Ultimate Team, everyone figures out how to use the ball, and yet the actual team is on, can't figure it out. Yeah. And it's just, it's just incredibly frustrating because it's so obvious for us. But I saw that Juventus' stock apparently went down 22% on Wednesday morning. Or you. Juventus publicly <laughs> traded? I mean... Like, there's a couple clubs that are like that. Yeah, like, wow. that's what I saw. Like, shares in Juventus fell by 22%. Because they, yeah. they dominate uh, Serie A every year, and it's just like they, they haven't been able to get over the hump. And to Ronaldo's point, like, if you have, for instance, you have Mandzukic or Benzema, right, as your, like, which one you could pick? Benzema still in Real Madrid, of course. Like, I think Mandzukic. Yeah. Like, and, like, it's just like, I don't understand... It's kind of thing he's calling out everybody. I mean, both forwards are, like, in their 30s. But, like, honestly, Mandzukic, honestly, I feel like Benzema kind of hit his peak a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, has been on a downward spiral ever since then. So I would probably take Mandzukic over Benzema, but... Yeah. I, mean, I just think it's crazy, you know, now they're out. And, like I said, Ajax playing Tottenham. I mean, who would have thought those two teams? Both I teams think it's pretty exciting else. seeing, like, new teams like this. Like, I don't want to yeah. see the same four teams in the semis every single mm-hmm. year. Ajax is, like, a fun little change-up compared to, like, previous years. So it's definitely, like, I honestly hope the best for them in the semifinals. Yeah. I mean, you know me. I hate Real Madrid, so I took so much joy <coughs> oh, yeah, in watching Ajax. And it's so funny thinking that them. literally the Ajax captain, like, Delic, Delit, I don't yeah. know how to pronounce it. He was, like, what, eight or nine years old when Ronaldo won his first Ballon d'Or? Yeah. Like, he was a he was a child, an infant, and now he's beating Ronaldo. We're, we're hitting the people who, uh, the players who are coming up now, and you see this in the NBA a little bit with guys that come in, they're like, I watched LeBron, like LeBron was my hero, and he's, LeBron's still in the league. Yeah, so and the they get like, deal. Now. yeah, that's yeah. exactly how it is now. And being able to, like, actually beat him, like, off a game-winning header, it's kind of right. crazy. Yeah, it's, I mean, so, hats off to Ajax. We'll talk about the uh, semifinal matchup in a little bit, but first we got to wrap up the other two games. Barcelona 3, Manchester United 0, Barcelona 4 nothing on aggregate. Uh, I had talked to you a little bit before the game. I was concerned. I was concerned because Barcelona, as I said on the previous podcast uh, with Brandon George, is that this is not the peak Barcelona. This is not Pep's Barcelona. I mean, Messi has been incredible, and in this game, he was incredible. I mean, he picked the ball off of Ashley Young early in the game, and the ball was at the back of the net in five seconds. Um, Before the game, from all the Messi haters, all I heard was, eh, Messi hasn't scored in the quarterfinals since, like, what, 2012, 2013? Duh. Yeah. First of all, stupid argument, because obviously he <laughs> contributes to, like, all the goals. Uh, but, yeah, he basically went in and said, screw all of you haters. I'm going to score two goals, not even just one. Mm-hmm. And the goals are beautiful. I mean, the second one, like... Poor De Gea. Yeah, the second one, not as beautiful. Poor De, Gea. De Gea, like, my grandfather probably could have stopped that, and he's no longer living. So that just says <laughs> something about De Gea. He's considered to be one of the best keepers in the world, yeah. but he can't even stop a ball that's like, literally goes right under him as he's falling. So, yeah. sorry, De Gea, but you're just not really impressing me, like, with that. I'm glad you're here calling all the messy haters stupid, because it means I don't have to do it. I feel oh, like I'm yeah. always on I that I mean, train. we're definitely on the same page as far as Messi goes. <laughs> um, and, I mean, Barcelona, once they got the first goal and the second goal came soon after, they just they suffocated Manchester United with how they played. Paul Pugba, I mean, another we talk about players that have immense talent and just seem to not want to be in their situation. Same thing. Like I know under Jose Mourinho, he was so angry frustrated whatever and then he played pretty well at the beginning of uh, OGS's run as Man U manager and now he just I mean he he should have got a yellow card so early in that game yesterday I was I was yelling at the TV I'm like dude yeah. you're just kicking Rakitic all over the place I'm like stop and yeah they're like here we'll just we'll just not give you a yellow because you're getting trashed by Barcelona we're gonna <laughs> yeah, give you like make- a little bit of a chance so I mean Man U I think they've uh, obviously had a great renaissance under OGS um, still pushing for a top four place in the Premier League. And, I mean, if we're looking at where they were in October and November under Mourinho, that's great, that's progress, but this is still not necessarily the Man U of old. And I think, uh, um, kind of going back to the last time Barcelona Man U played, which, of course, is the 2011 Champions League final, I wasn't a fan then, really. Yeah. I was just getting into being a soccer fan. Same exact result back then, except Man U actually scored once. This time, couldn't even do that much. Sorry, Man U. And we're led by players like Wayne Rooney and um, those type of people that were Man U. You know, Bar- there's, there's big clubs, even Juventus in defeat and Ajax. 
and Barcelona and Real Madrid, they have identities. And Manchester United had that for the longest time with their Ferguson, and it seems like they don't anymore. And I'm not sure how you build that back. With all the pieces they have, it's honestly kind of like depressing that they're the only team in the quarterfinals who didn't score a single goal in either leg. Yeah. So that's like really depressing on Man U's behalf. And I honestly don't feel bad for their fans at all, especially reading about how they had racist tweets toward their own player. Yeah. Like, what kind of person are you if you're tweeting racist things at your own player? Mm-hmm. Yeah, grow the, up. There's been issues with that at Chelsea too. Yeah, uh, I saw and that. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's stupid. Um, and uh, I was gonna say, Messi got UCL Player of the Week this week. Uh, obviously, it. yeah, deservedly so. He played <laughs> probably the best out of any player in the quarterfinals. Him, uh, Jared PK, watching most of their games this year, and Mark Andre Ter Stegen have been leading this team. If they are able to win this Champions League, it will be because of those three players. Because pe- people like Sergio Busquets, who uh, the longest time most reliable at the at the six at the center defensive mid, you know the model. I remember for me when I was trying to play that position, it was the model. He was it. He just pisses the ball away so yeah. much now. He's he's rusty and it's it's sad, but I mean Messi just a lot of times he solves the problems. And Suarez, I mean, he's been playing better lately too. And Coutinho, thank God, Coutinho got a goal in this game. Yeah, finally. I mean, everyone like all the Barca fans who have been like giving Coutinho trash. Like I know you saw the him. you saw the celebration, right? He literally went up and like put his fingers in his ears. He's basically saying like. I'm not listening to all you haters. I'm going to do me. Yeah. He scored a banger of a goal, a classic Coutinho style. That's literally like his goal when he cuts back to his right side and just bangs it back post. That's it, literally the classic Coutinho goal. It, so glad he got that. It was just crucial for him, I think, for that reason and the confidence. Too. Yeah, definitely for confidence. There's so many rumors that he's going to be sold off for like half the price in the summer and stuff. And I mean, I think he's a great player. I just think he needs time uh, to assimilate. And the difference between him and uh, Usman Dembele, who usually they play same position is um, a very different contrast to the players they can be. So I think he's certainly good to see that because he's facing his old club in the semifinals, Liverpool, at the easiest um, draw of Porto. I'm sorry. Any We're going to talk about Man U. I love talking oh, you about how go? trash Man U is. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I mean, yeah, Man U, like, you, it's not even <laughs> that you can fall back on the Premier League. You're not even top four in that. So you might not be in the Champions League next year. Like, there's a good chance of that. So Europa you kind of pooped away your, your whole league. Like, you're supposed to be this great team, but you guys aren't in the Champions League anymore, and you don't really have much of a chance in the Premier League. So that kind of sucks. Mourinho came, even like Mourinho came out and said, uh, like, you need a cage to contain Messi because of like how bad Man U was doing of a job of defending him because he was literally just dribbling all over them. The fact that like Messi can control the ball that well is pretty freaking amazing. Like, it's inhuman how well he can control the ball. Yeah, and for all of uh, Man U's resources, and also Mourinho didn't really do a good job of stopping Messi when he was at Real Madrid, to be fair. But for all of Man U's resources, their answer to. Messi on Tuesday was Phil Jones and Ashley Young and Chris Smalling. So yeah. let that sink in. And did you see the clip of Phil Jones where Messi spun him around like a doll? Yes. Phil Jones caught up and then Messi just begged him and just and not. That's so funny. There's Basically, a, like, I'm just going to embarrass you twice. In there a was row. a Barstool sports tweet. Uh, that, you know, Barstool's not really related to soccer. Yeah. And they're like, Number four isn't even playing the same game as Messi. <laughs> it's just, damn. Yeah, I mean, Manu was in that game for maybe 30 seconds because that's when Rashford had that close goal, right? Like, hit the crossbar. That was about the extent of their being in the game was the I, first 30 seconds. I was changing, getting ready for the uh, presentation I had to give later that night. And also, then I hear the announcer go, oh, and I look and it's just straight off the crossbar. And I was like, it's 30 seconds in, guys. My heart can't handle this. And then 10 minutes, 15, I think it's 15 kind, minutes later. It's right? kind of stupid that VAR overruled the PK on Barcelona also. I don't know if you saw yeah, that. Yeah, that was like, early. Um, it was kind of... I definitely did think it was a PK. This is one thing I kind of think VAR is stupid for as far as like calls like that, just because... Honestly, it looked like Rak- Rakitic got a touch on it. He got tripped up. Yeah. I don't think it should have been called back. I think it was kind of a stupid thing to stop the play for and go check. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it did end up getting overturned. Didn't really have an impact on the game. But right. still, I thought that was At the time, stupid. it did, though, I thought. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to go with something here. And this is, goes for any sport. So I'm sure I'll say this more on football podcasts and all this stuff. But... You know, we've gotten so good. I think VAR is a good thing. Like I said, in the Man State Tottenham game. Oh, yeah. The I, overall, call. I definitely think it's a good thing. But, but, and this is the thing that I think some people 
miss is that, you know, when, like, in the NBA, when you see a foul in slow motion, or in soccer, when you see, like, the guy gets stepped on. Like, you and I both played for a long time. You know when you get stepped on, and they... I know some players will exaggerate a little bit, but for us, when you get stepped on on your ankle, it hurts. It hurts yeah. a lot. People and they're think, using people metal think soccer players only flop. Like, getting stepped on doesn't really look that bad on camera, but when it happens, like, in real time, like, if you get stepped on by someone when they're actually, like, putting all their, like, force, like, all their weight on your foot yeah. with these, like, sharp cleats, like, mm-hmm. it hurts. Obviously, you're going to go down in pain. How many bruises did you have during your career? Oh, it's all up here. Like, LA. literally so many. Like, it's it's crazy. Literally, it's, it's been so bad. Like, I got cut up super bad. District district finals, I think, high school. Literally, this guy cleated me in the knee. I had, yep. like, four deep scars on my knee. Literally yep. so bad. Just got taped up, went right back in the game. Yeah. That stuff hurts, like, so bad. That's the problem, and it's more than just soccer, like I said. But if you are able to slow down something so, like, to the... Uh, to frame by frame, like we do for these instant replays, right? I mean, in the NCAA tournament, for instance, you saw they were trying to figure out when that that Virginia guy tipped yeah. the ball or not. So it's like, if you slow it down so much, the content looks like the contact looks like it's nothing. Like it doesn't look like it's a push even. Nothing looks like a foul if you slow it down enough. That's yeah. my thing. With yeah, that. no, I definitely understand that. Like, but I do think like for that instance with the PK, I thought it was stupid, but it's kind of crazy how v, uh, like VAR decided who was going to go through with Man City and, like, Tottenham. Yeah, and... Like, if, uh, if VAR wasn't a thing, then Man City would have gone through if that was a missed call. And like, Porto-Roma uh, yeah. a couple rounds ago, yeah, so. Yeah, these are, like, deciding rounds, like, deciding who's going through, so I definitely think it's kind of, like, good on that, like, in that aspect. Like, if Tottenham goes on to, like, possibly win Champions League, obviously not saying that they are, and mm-hmm. I don't really want them to either, <laughs> but if they do, then, I mean, all the credit goes to VAR then because, like, they literally could have been out of the Champions League in the quarterfinal without it. Yeah, I, I just think at some point, I think it's a great tool, we just have to be careful. Yeah. Just have to be careful, because all of a sudden there's going to be no fouls and nothing's going to matter, and yeah. it's just like, no yellow cards and stuff. Yeah, I know for a fact my friend my friend Clay is like a huge Arsenal fan, so he was probably pissed about that VAR call because he hates Tottenham so oh, yeah. much. Yeah. Arsenal-Tottenham rivalry, can't can't beat it. Yeah, but I mean, Arsenal's in Europa League and Tottenham is actually in Champions League, so like... You, you just wanted to say that for him, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, kind of wanted to rub it in his face. Him and if uh, Frazier's listening, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Um, Sorry, Frazier. <laughs> so please give me an A on the, in the class. <laughs> so the last quarterfinal, Liverpool four, Porto one. Liverpool six to one on aggregate. <clears throat> uh, this one's last. I don't think we need to say much about this game. We yeah, knew, another game that really like Liverpool wasn't worried about. Yeah, I mean we knew coming in that everyone really wanted Porto in the draw. Uh, Liverpool got them. Liverpool took care of them. I mean Mane, Salah, Firmino, the big three all scored. Yeah. Uh, even Van Dijk from center back came in, scored, and they truly never felt secure in there in the semifinals again a year after going all the way to the final last year. Yeah. I mean their front three definitely played really well. I saw like an interesting like stat thing that in three of the four last away games for Liverpool, Mane has scored in the twenty sixth minute and like three of the last. <laughs> That's four like ones. his minute. Yeah, I guess like twenty sixth one. And the, I mean the one in this game was the one that was like reviewed by VAR for like being offsides or whatever. Honestly, to me it really looked offsides even when I watched it slow down. Mm-hmm. But I guess it, he was like barely on sides but yeah. like to me it really looked like he was off sides it's so whatever like I said it wouldn't have really impacted the game that much but yeah kudos to the Liverpool front three for all getting goals and they really seem to like expose Porto's defense pretty much every single goal they were like finding holes in the Porto defense and being able to like play balls through and score goals off it so Porto's defense is really like off their game right yeah, uh, I think before the season I was a bit skeptical skeptical of Liverpool joining the elite, you know, the elite clubs uh, in Europe. That we haven't really had English teams uh, up there with the elite teams. We've had Barcelona, Madrid, Juventus, Bayern, and uh, yeah. a challenger will come in every once in a while. But and it, I think Liverpool really, in a way, under Klopp, has leveled up this year to where they are in that top they're five, to where they deservedly in the semifinals, like, and they're leading the Premier League, and they're in the semifinals of the yeah, exactly. Champions League. And whereas, I mean, now they're playing my team next. I mean, I'm I'm a little concerned. In the sense, however, oh yeah, I don't think they're scared. To be honest, I really don't yeah. think Liverpool's that scared. I know they think it's going to be a challenge for sure, because mm-hmm. obviously Barcelona is always a challenge. But I don't think they're really that scared about it. Uh, they definitely need to find a way to be able to contain Messi, because that's never an easy thing to do. But as far as their attack goes, I really think that if they just keep playing the way they have been, they 
have a fighting chance. Yeah. So I think um, here's one thing though. They're not scared, and I don't think the players should be scared. The fans though, under when Liverpool won, I was scrolling through the replies on Twitter a little bit. And there were not a lot of people, but there were a couple people that um were saying you know they had like pictures of Virgil Van Dijk, who probably is the best center back in the world right now. And it's just like Messi's not ready. And it's like. Look, I understand you're very happy. How many happy. times do we have to tell you this, old man? Yeah, like, I understand you're very happy. I understand your team's really good now for the first time in a long time. But, like, and this isn't a peak Barcelona team. I don't say that. Like, I'm kind of worried about this game in that sense. But, like, saying you want Messi is asinine. Yeah. Like, you stupid. cannot do that. Like, <laughs> come on. You're just basically asking to get embarrassed. Like, yeah, and, like, Van Dyke even, himself said it's going to be really hard, a really hard challenge, which you, it is. Like, Yeah, you know I'm a big Bayern fan, and, yeah. like, a few years ago, I don't remember what year it was, but like when they played Bayern, Bayern versus Barca, I, I can't remember what. It was like I think it was the twenty fifteen semis. So yeah, yeah, and won. like literally yeah. Messi like had basically, I don't want to say crossed up because it's like basketball, but he basically like cut and then cut again, and Boateng, Boateng fell on the floor. Who was Jerome and then Boateng? He chipped was, Neuer, yeah. and I was like, oh my gosh, like honestly, I'm pissed right now. <laughs> but like that was so beautiful to watch by Messi. Like I'm not even mad. Probably the best center back and. <laughs> Goalie combo yeah, was and he basically made time. him look like he was nothing. Like he put him on the ground. It was crazy. Did you know that in 2013, I think it was when you guys won your title and you smashed Barcelona seven nothing on aggregate? I yeah. cried. Really? I watched every minute. At the end of it, it was six nothing, and I was just I could wow. not believe. I'm surprised you watched the entire thing. I I'm a Detroit fan. I suffer a lot. It's yeah. kind of how it goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean that PSG Barca game. Last was it last year or two years ago? I was at work for that. Oh really? You missed it? That I recorded it. I incredible. went home. I got off my shift at ten at Panera, watched the whole thing with my dad, and I was just like, oh, crazy. So you Roberto forever, forever, and that's why like that's the other thing I've brought up is like there are certain teams. This is again a little bit why I'm concerned about the semifinal matchup. There are certain teams, and you know this as Bayern, like when you're the heavyweight and you are playing a team, and even if I think you relate to this too, like this wasn't a peak Bayern year, but when you go against certain teams in European competitions because you've been there so often, for like PSG or Man City for us, it's just like it doesn't matter who's on the team. Like we just have owned you. Like we beat Man City how many straight times? Yeah. That game, like we beat PSG how many straight times? But then if we're playing. Juventus, I'm like, ah, crap, they've beat us a couple times. This is And Liverpool, we just haven't played in years. So it's just like, it's a bit uh, different. It's, it's, uh, it may, has no impact at all, because these games could be like five years ago, but it's like, in my head, I'm like, all right, we're going to, it's fine. It's PSG. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it has to be, honestly, and this hurts my heart, how Ohio State feels about playing Michigan at this point. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> They're like not even worried anymore at this point. But anyway, that's off topic. Yes. Kudos to Porto for at least making it this far. Um, Iker Casillas is still playing. Yeah, I That's saw incredible. that. Feel bad, feel bad for him. Honestly, didn't realize that. Saw him as the starting keeper for Porto, and I was like, I thought this guy retired like a few years ago. <laughs> but like anyway, <laughs> I mean, they had a couple good opportunities on offense, but they just didn't seem to be able to finish the ball. Um, yeah. So Laws goal was off a great pass by Alexander Arnold. That was literally a beautiful threaded ball through the defense, like I was saying, because there were so many holes in mm-hmm. Porto's defense. But I was there. Arnold is leveled up too. Yeah, they're definitely able to like find those holes and thread it through. Liverpool's offense looking pretty good right now, so it's definitely going to be a good semifinal with Barcelona. So uh, before we go, quick hit Ajax Tottenham first instinct. Um, I want to say that. It's gonna be a a pretty good matchup to be honest, because at this point I'm not I'm not considering Ajax to be a super underdog like I was maybe no, maybe this more. round or the round before. They've definitely proven themselves to be a really good team, so I'm hoping that it'll be a really good matchup. Um, like Ajax, obviously really young, but they it seems like that doesn't really get to them that much. It seems like they're still able to work together pretty well, so I hope that they're able to step it up in the semifinal and prove themselves once again to Tottenham. But is wait is Kane still gonna be out? I think so. He is. That's that might be like a game changer. I mean, it wasn't in the last round, but yeah, he, he's, he's he's definitely tough like, to miss. yeah, he's definitely a crucial goal scorer for Tottenham. So I said this for a while uh, with the NCAA tournament. I said Virginia's the team of destiny. I didn't know if I believed it, but after they lost, they lost to the 16 seed last year. I'm like, this is this is happening. I get that feel with Ajax a little bit. It feels a little bit like that. And as my team is still in the competition, that scares the shit out of me. The crazy thing is Ajax has literally won or lost one game the whole entire uh, yeah. Champions League thus far. Granted, they've tied quite a few, like a few of them like in the regular rounds and like in the playoffs and stuff. But 
the only game that they lost was two to one to Real Madrid, and then mm-hmm. they ended up coming back and beating them like what four to one? Yeah, the round right after that. So I mean, they're a pretty scary team right now. Only losing one game, and their offense looking pretty strong. So Tottenham better not come in expecting to just blow them out. Yeah. So I I think I'd take Ajax to win that. Yeah, um, I think it'll. I honestly think it'll be split. I think uh, Tottenham will win one, and Ajax will win the other. It's just going to come down to who's going to score more goals. Yep. And their win. But I think it'll be a split series, so it'll be interesting to watch. And then the two traditional heavyweights, Barcelona and Liverpool. This is going to be a good series. For me, the thing that I'm interested to see is uh, Valverde, the Barcelona manager, gets a, gets a lot of crap. I'm interested to see what he does with Coutinho. Because obviously there's Coutinho and there's Suarez that we just, for two years, were like, hey, we're just going to buy your best player, Liverpool. Yeah. Um, so I wonder how they play. Suarez has been on and off for most of the year. Like, yeah, honestly, I kind of forgot about that. Like Suarez and Coutinho are coming for blood, like with Liverpool. I mean, obviously they probably just have they probably have love for Liverpool because obviously that's who they played for before. That's kind of what built them into the players that they are today. But still, obviously, they want to prove that they've moved past that and they've gotten even better and that they can continue to thrive in the team that they're on now. So the Suarez bite watch is at a high level for this. Oh game. yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, he, might, he might go out and like bite several people. The referee, he might jump into the stands and bite a couple people up there too. <laughs> we don't, we never really know. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be a Barca fan if I didn't pick them though. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I definitely have Barcelona winning this. I don't think it'll be easy, but hopefully Messi can work his magic just like he has been. Hopefully. We, we can dream. And Ronaldo will be watching from his couch. That's right. That is not the best player. Sorry, Ronaldo. Time. You can go, like, work out with your kid or whatever you do. Like, take a bunch of modeling pictures with him. Have fun doing that. Evade taxes. Yeah. Evade court. Exactly. There we go. Classic Ronaldo. Julio, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Assist Podcast. If you like the show, go drop a five-star rating. That really helps us keep the show going. If you want to stay updated with all the podcast episodes, hit the subscribe button and also go follow our Twitter, which is at assist underscore podcast, and our Instagram, which is now the Assist Podcast. And you can write any emails, uh, any suggestions you have to theassistpod at yahoo.com, and we'll see you next week.